According to the old saying, there's a new human born every minute. This probably means there's a new animal born every second, and considering how vast and often mysterious the animal kingdom is, you can imagine just how many newborn creatures are popping up as we speak. But what about those rare species we never knew or seemed to care about? Or what about mutations we've never seen before? They're out there, and we're about to show you 15 animals that are born only once in a thousand years. Egyptian Goat Monster If you haven't seen this insane looking monster goat in a now viral video, then now is your chance. Despite its unusual appearance, it is in fact not a monster. This goat is simply an unfortunate victim of the genetic Russian roulette that accompanies extreme animal breeding. Known for its impressive milk production, reproduction prowess, and tasty meat, the Damascus goat is also beloved by breeders throughout the Middle East for its unique appearance. With its disproportionately giant head, vaulted skull, freakishly long neck, flabby skin, and unnerving underbite, this male is likely the result of many generations of the most dramatically featured individuals being mated together. And now that this breed has become popular as an exotic pet, the features that were once more subtle in livestock populations are now being purposefully exaggerated like this goat. Sellers proudly show off their most beautiful specimens online and even enter them in local and nationwide competitions. Goat connoisseurs in the Arab Gulf region will reportedly pay as much as $67,000 for the finest Damascus specimens, which are cherished in the local culture and bred and traded for lucrative profit. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. Speaking of animals that are born only once in a thousand years, we'd love to offer some insight as to what this little humanoid being in the image might be. But frankly, we're stumped. It could be the bulbous head, bulging green eyes, abnormal ears, and let's not forget the multiple nipples that are throwing us off. Any ideas? Whatever it is, it must have been born this way. And the creature's unusual features are perfectly normal. Humans are also adapting to their environment. For example, mutations allowing humans to live at high altitudes have become more common in populations in Tibet, Ethiopia, and the Andes. The spread of genetic mutations in Tibet is possibly the fastest evolutionary change in humans occurring over the past 3,000 years. So there has to be a reason this mysterious being developed such strange features, don't you think? Help us out! Leave a comment with the hashtag sweet topic and let the world know. Albino Alligator Albino alligators are extremely rare. Biologists estimate there are only about 200 in the world. Albino animals come from parents that have the recessive gene for albinism. The condition prevents the animals from creating melanin to color their eyes and skin. That means albino alligators would not survive very long in their natural habitats of swamps and rivers. They can't camouflage in their dark surroundings with their white skin and pinkish eyes and one of them is made an appearance at the Brookfield Zoo in Illinois. Appropriately named Snowflake, the female gator measures in at seven feet long. And recently, two new baby albino alligators were born at a wildlife attraction in Florida. They're the babies of Snowflake and an albino male named Blizzard. Pretty cool, huh? The hatchlings' eggs were two of elected collected from their mother. The eggs were put in an incubator for about 60 days to keep them at a stable temperature and increase the chances of survival. This genetic mutation that causes albinism tends to make animals less hardy in general. We can't have that. Alligators were once endangered, but conservation and management have grown their numbers to high levels. 1.2 million in Florida alone. There's no real conservation advantage to owning or breeding albinos, but they're a tourist draw, that's for sure. Two-Headed Kitty A two-headed kitten was born in Oregon, and its owners named it Biscuits and Gravy because well, why not? A woman discovered four newborn kittens in her farm cat's litter. She then discovered two more kittens, one that looked different from the rest. The kitten had two tiny noses, four eyes tightly shut, and two meowing mouths. Aww. While the two-faced kitten, known as a Janus cat, is unusual, it's not unheard of. Janus cats have a rare defect called dysprosopus, or cranial duplication, and most don't live longer than a day. But one Janus cat is known to have defied the odds. A cat named Frank and Louie lived 15 years. After reaching out to her vet, the kitten owners learned there isn't much they can do for the kitten except make it comfortable and help it eat by bottle feeding the cat and keeping it warm by tucking it into a shirt. Biscuits and Gravy only has one brainstem, 
but can eat, suck, and meow using both of his mouths. For now, the little one is doing very well, according to the family's veterinarian. While they've decided to give away the rest of the litter, biscuits and gravy is officially a part of their family. You know what they say, two heads is better than one. <laughs> Monkey-human hybrids. For the first time, scientists have been able to successfully grow monkey embryos containing human cells. Researchers grew the embryos in a dish, with some surviving up to 20 days. The team injected monkey embryos with human stem cells and watched them develop. Researchers hope that some human-animal hybrids, known as chimeras, could provide better models in which to test drugs and be used to grow human organs for transplants. They observed human and monkey cells divide and grow together in a dish with at least three embryos surviving to 19 days after fertilization. And they've done it before, too. In 2017, they reported a series of other hybrids, pig embryos grown with human cells, cow embryos grown with human cells, and rat embryos grown with mouse cells. But the latest work has divided some experts. Some question the need for such experiments using closely related primates. Non-human primates are protected by stricter research ethics rules than our rodents. So their research immediately ignited debate over the ethics of such an endeavor and sparked fears of human-monkey hybrids. It's like something out of a science fiction movie. Very Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Mangalitsa Fluffy Pig Bred by an emperor and nearly killed off by communists, this pig has been through a lot during its nearly two centuries of existence. A lumbering, chunky beast with a sheep-like coat it's the hairiest and fattiest of all pigs, and according to its many fans, it's also one of the tastiest. Mangalitsa is a rare breed of pig of Hungarian origin that has an unusual growth of curly hair over its body, akin to that of a sheep. That's why it's called the sheep pig. It's the last pig in existence to sport this unusual fleece, and it was nearly lost to extinction by the 1990s when fewer than 200 pigs remained. Breeding of this animal started in the 1830s in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, when the emperor received some rare pigs from a Serbian prince and crossed them with a couple of other species of pigs. And this was the end result. The new pigs sported curly hair and were inclined to put on much weight. Initially, the pig was reserved for the royal family, but because of its great taste, it became so popular that by the end of the 19th century, it was the main breed in Europe. With a calm, docile temperament, they're easy to handle compared to many other breeds, and they even let you brush them. While they certainly don't have to be groomed, Mangalitsa pigs actually love it. Blue-footed booby When you look up at the blue sky overhead or gaze across the seemingly endless expanse of a blue ocean, you might think that the color blue is common in nature. But among all the hues found in rocks, plants, and flowers, or in the fur, feathers, scales, and skin of animals, blue is surprisingly scarce. Blue-footed boobies are definitely a different sort of bird. As many of you might know, the word booby was used in Old English to refer to a dimwit, lunkhead, crazy person, clown, idiot, simpleton, or all-around silly fellow. The blue-footed booby's name originally came from the Spanish word bobo, meaning stupid fellow. The boobies walk funny, whistle and honk, thus earning their name. They've captivated the human imagination for centuries with their mating display, in which its vivid baby blue feet play a key role. They catch fish in spectacular dives from high in the air, with hundreds plunging into the ocean at any moment. The blue color of its feet, however, varies in its intensity. Boobies with bluer feet appear to have more success in finding a mate than birds with duller blue feet. They nest on islands in the tropical eastern Pacific. Though thousands live in Mexico's Gulf of California, finding them in the United States or Canada is extremely rare. Poodle Moth it's been compared to a fluffy dog, and some say it looks like a real-life Pokemon character. Others say it could be a Power Rangers villain. Needless to say, the Venezuelan poodle moth is one of a kind. It was first photographed in 2009 by a zoologist in Venezuela. The name derives from a comparison of its physical appearance to a cross between a moth and a poodle. The Venezuelan poodle moth is even more bizarre looking than your run-of-the-mill moth. However, if this showy critter is indeed a neotropical relative, it's much more benign. Such moths feed on plants and cause little trouble. They're also relatively small. The moth's wingspan amounts to little more than an inch. They're extremely rare, so it's highly unlikely you'll see this on your porch anytime soon. The physical appearance and lack of actual information have led to its existence being doubted as a hoax on the internet. The first thing to emphasize is that the poodle moth is no phony. It's cute, 
furry, scary look is totally in line with what's expected for a neotropical ornamental moth. Zorse. For some reason, scientists are always trying to make animal mixtures. We have the mule, the offspring of a horse and a donkey. We insisted on creating the liger, the beefalo, and of course, the zorse. A zebroid is the offspring of any cross between a zebra and any other equine to create a hybrid. A zorse is one of the many equine hybrids that are referred to as zebroids. It's a crossbreed between a zebra stallion and a horse mare producing an animal with a predominantly horse-like appearance with stripes. It's renowned to be a sturdy and hardy animal, resistant to many diseases that horses and donkeys are affected by and have sometimes been known to live up to 30 years. Zorses come in all shapes and sizes, and while their zebra bands aren't full body black and white, they're prominent and arresting and usually confined to their necks, legs, and rumps. And while horses are generally interested in socializing with humans, Zorses are most often standoffish and difficult to train as you would a regular horse. Although human-tinkered animal hybrids seem like a new thing, naturalist, geologist, and biologist Charles Darwin even wrote about Zorses in 1868. <laughs> Green Sea Slug most of us were taught that plants find foods and live from a cooking process called photosynthesis. In this process, plants convert carbon dioxide and nutrients from the soil using sunlight as the fire to get the energy they need. The outcome of this process is oxygen. But did you know that it's not only plants that do such work on the planet? A creature called emerald green sea slugs do it as well. It feeds on algae. However, the energy obtained from feeding is not the only thing they need. They also feed on algae to harvest the chloroplast from the plant. Up until now, this is the only animal on Earth known to do such a thing. And the reason for them to harvest the chloroplast from algae is not less strange because they want the ability to photosynthesize themselves. Since their discovery, scientists didn't know that this slug could perform photosynthesis by itself. For decades, the assumption had been spread, yet there was no direct evidence that emerald green sea slugs can do this process by themselves. However, after 40 years of study and experiments, scientists finally found out that this sea slug can really do it. The small-sized slug is commonly found in Northern America in any water body such as salt marshes, tidal marshes, pools, and shallow creeks not deeper than a couple of feet. Just like its name, it has a green color that resembles the color of algae it feeds on. Cyclops Puppy A Cyclops puppy has been hailed as lucky by Thai villagers after he was born with only one eye in the middle of his head. The mutant mutt, called Kevin, was in a litter of two in central Thailand. Two days after the unusual dog's birth, he appeared to be fit and healthy, with his owners bottle feeding him every day. The owner said he was getting dressed when he noticed his Aspen dog had given birth to two puppies on the bedroom floor. He put them in a basket to keep warm, then noticed the fascinating mutation on one of the new arrivals. After the news spread across the village, neighbors came to his house to see the lucky puppy, using the day he was born for their lottery numbers. And the whole family was delighted to have a newborn puppy with the unusual physical abnormality. However, it's still not clear if the puppy's single eye will function properly as it typically takes around two months for a dog's sight to develop. Cyclopia, named after the Greek mythology character Cyclops, is a birth defect characterized by the failure of the embryonic prosencephalon to properly divide the orbits of the eye into two cavities. Birth defect aside, this family considers Kevin the Cyclops puppy good luck and a welcome addition to the family. <laughs> Naked Chickens this unusual new chicken comes from a natural breed. According to the scientists who have bred this new naked chicken species, these birds grow faster and their meat is low fat. Interestingly, this strange breed is not genetically modified, but is the result of a 50-year effort using natural breeding methods. The new species has been bred through natural selection. The geneticists have spent a long time interbreeding broiler chickens with birds with fewer feathers. And frankly, they look a little out of place in the chicken coop. From a scientific standpoint, it's an ordinary chicken, except for the fact that it has no feathers. Moreover, the absence of feathers reduces the chicken's resistance to many skin diseases. Birds will be consistently subjected to bacterial or fungal infections through skin injuries. However, the meat does not taste any different from those prepared from ordinary chicken, or so say those who have tasted it. The purpose behind this man-made breed was to create a chicken that's cheaper and more convenient and efficient compared to the typical, everyday chicken we all know and love faster growth. Their meat is lower in fat, 
and they're energy efficient and require less food to produce the same amount of meat. Snake with legs. Snakes and lizards are both members of the order Squamata, but while lizards walk on fully formed legs, snakes opt for a legless slither. Just why and how these animals took such different evolutionary paths is a matter of scientific debate. Incredibly, a 113 million year old fossil from Brazil is the first four-legged snake that scientists have ever seen. Several other fossil snakes have been found with hind limbs, but this new find is estimated to be a direct ancestor of modern snakes. Its delicate arms and legs were not used for walking, but probably helped the creature to grab its prey. That comparatively feeble grasp, which may have also been applied during mating, is where the species gets its name. Tetrapodophis, the fossil's new genus, means four-footed snake. Could this just be a rare extinct animal? The fossil shows adaptations for burrowing, not swimming, strengthening the idea that snakes evolved on land. That debate is a long-running one among paleontologists that snakes developed from marine reptiles. The genetic machinists behind this process are essentially switched to the off position thanks to multiple genetic mutations that occurred more than 100 million years ago. Two-Headed Turtle Recently, a rare two-headed turtle hatched in Cape Cod in Massachusetts, according to a local wildlife hospital and education center. They shared on its social media that the diamondback turtle hatched from a protected nesting site and was brought to the animal hospital for inspection. The hatchling has a condition known as bicephaly, a rare anomaly that can occur from both genetic and environmental factors that influence the embryo during development. Similar to conjoined twins, the turtles share parts of their body and also have some that are independent. In this case, they have two heads and six legs. Both sides of the turtle were very alert and active when the hatchling was admitted to the Cape Wildlife Center. They're eating, swimming, and gaining weight every day. It appears that they work together to navigate their environment. So far, x-rays have revealed that the hatchling has two spines that fuse further down the body. Workers at the hospital observed that the heads have shown control of these three legs each while moving and swimming. The right side appears to be slightly more developed, but both sides are eating and digesting food. And a deep water swim test showed that each side of the hatchling can coordinate swimming so that it could come to the surface and breathe. Dog with two noses. Meet the smelliest little dog you've ever seen. It's a puppy with two noses. And despite its unusual birth defect, this canine seems perfectly normal. Does having two noses have advantages? Probably. A canine's nose has the ability to separate air. A portion goes directly to the olfactory sensing area, where the other portion is dedicated to breathing. When sniffing, dogs' noses are designed so that air can move in and out at the same time, creating a continuous circulation of air, unlike humans who have to either breathe in or out. It gets better. Dogs have a special organ that gives them a second sense of smell. A dog's vomer onasal organ helps them detect pheromones, which are chemicals that animals release that affect other members of the same species. And if you think a dog's nose couldn't get more advanced, it does. Dogs smell in 3D. They can smell separately with each nostril, just as our eyes compile two slightly different views of the world and our brain combines them to form a 3D picture, a dog's brain uses the different odor profiles from each nostril to determine exactly where smelly objects are located. So chances are, this two-nosed pup just might be the unicorn of dogs around the world. Zubran Last but not least, the Zubran a cross between cows and wiesent. What's a wiesent? Those are European wood bison that once bordered on extinction, but now are on the way to a comeback thanks to reintroduction efforts. So basically, Zubrin are like beefalo, a cow and a buffalo mix. They were first discovered in 1847. The name Zubrin was officially chosen from hundreds of proposals sent to a Polish weekly magazine during a contest organized in 1969. After World War I, various scientists considered Zubrin a possible replacement for domestic cattle. This new breed turned out to be more durable and less susceptible to disease. In addition, they could be bred on marginal grazing land with no farm infrastructure and with minimal husbandry and huge state agricultural farms. After World War I, many Europeans thought they would replace domestic cattle because of their durability and resistance to disease. But scientists didn't breed the first fertile Zubrin until 1960, and in 1980, they discontinued the program because of a lack of interest from state-owned farms. However, a single herd of them remains in a national park in Poland. Wouldn't you agree? 
Seeing these unique animals is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Stick around for more outrageous videos and like and subscribe while you're at it.